So guys, today we're going to be taking a look at my bushcrafting day pack. And before we get started, as always guys, please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. And if you guys have any outdoors bushcraft ideas that you guys think I can uh, that you guys think I can share with you, or if you guys have any awesome ideas you'd like to see, please do not forget to leave those in the comment section below. Anyways guys, let's get into this. So guys, like I was saying, this is my bushcrafting day pack, and over this summer and into this fall, I've been doing a lot of college and taking a lot of, or I've been taking college courses and I've been very busy with those. And so with that being said, I've not been able to go out and really stay out and be as free as far as bushcrafting goes. So that put me to task in developing a day pack that if I had a day that I could go out or if I had half a day to go out, what is an effective pack that could carry everything that I wanted to carry to allow me to practice my essential bushcraft skills as well as having fun, being able to make meals, craft, start fires, you know, just overall bushcrafting tasks, even up to building shelters. So this is what I kind of came up with and I'm still of course tweaking it but for the most part this is what my day pack looks like for if I'm going out for a very limited time if I only have a day or a half a day to spend out in the woods but I want to get out bushcraft and do that kind of work. So this of course I also want to note would be paired with my personal survival kit likely a belt knife and a gun of swords depending if I'm hunting or if I'm going after any small game I would have an appropriate rifle for that or if I'm just caring for defense I would have an appropriate handgun for that but in this specific pack we're just going to be or in this specific video we're just going over this pack so now let's actually take a look at this pack in particular. So starting with the outside or outermost stuff, as you guys can probably prominently tell here, I have the Silky Big Boy. And this is a very, so this is a pretty good sized saw. What I primarily carry it for is processing larger pieces of wood that I'll either turn into fire material, kindling for starting fires, or I'll turn it or I'll use it to cut uh, larger trees or larger logs that I can further baton with knives to turn into things such as forks, spoons, you know, eatery types of utensils. So that's the primary purpose of this saw. As well, I can, if need be, construct shelters with it. I have done that in the past. So it has a lot of purposes, but that is the first and most prominent feature of this path. So the next part here is my kind of cooking system. This is not the complete cooking system, but of course running a stainless steel Nalgene uh, bottle here. And then of course a Glacier, GSI Glacier in the bottom here. And that is for making cups of coffee, doing lighter cooking, carrying water for doing other types of cooking. And I'll get into that more in a little bit. So as far as this pouch, I do want to address, there's a back pouch that runs along this line. There's actually nothing in that except for, obviously, I am bushcrafter on YouTube, so I carry film equipment, and so usually I will be carrying some type of film equipment in this, pack, in this back pouch here. But as far as actual bushcrafting or outing equipment, there is none in there. So next to that is the top of this or as you guys can see this thing. It's not quite on you guys' right side, but in this, I pretty much just carry a piece of cattail, and then I carry, I don't even know if Night Eye still makes these, but uh, they, they, these are Night Eye's knot bones, and basically what they are, I carry four of them in here, are basically really simple pieces of plastic that have multiple different cutouts and holes in them, and those things, or those cuts and holes and such, help form just knots, if you will. And so it's kind of a really easy way to set up knots for tensioning things, especially if you're running hammock setups like I am with this kit. Um, that's a really nice thing to have. So that is what's all in there and just kind of miscellaneous stuff overall. So digging into this pouch here next, there's only two things that are in here. 
and one of them, the primary thing that's in here, is the tree straps for the hammock, as you guys would suspect. And then in the back, there's a small little pouch in here, and in that, there's a cliff bar. So just really basic stuff in there, and not too much. That actually pretty much has that pouch maxed out, but I don't really need a whole lot. And once again, I'm trying to cut down on the overall size of this pound or pack. So the next pouch here that I conveniently forgot was open because I was taking a battery out of here uh, is this pouch here. This generally was supposed to like hold maps and such, but all I carry in here is just some bandages or just gauze material in case I cut myself and I need to, or in case anyone gets cut and they need to do some bandaging of whatever is cut. So the next part is actually taking a look inside here. So popping that. The next part is in this. So all there is in here is just my hammock. And this is the full sized hammock. It takes up all the space in there. So there's nothing else in there, but just the hammock. So now taking a look at probably the most busy of all these compartments, the main compartment. So in here, like I said, it is definitely the most busy places, and I'm actually gonna move you guys in for a close-up. I'm rolling a close-up so you guys can more properly see what's in here. So starting off with this large, just like, animal, who's actually just a possum fur, and I use this to fully cover the hook knife. And once again, I put a large emphasis in this kit of having a maximum amount of tools to practice as many skills as I possibly could. I also wanted to set this kit up to be kind of a jack of all trades so that I could just pick up this kit and run with it. And I would have, if I did that, I would have the ability to carry or do things, anything ranging from fires and cooking all the way to things like carving, more intricate things. So like I said, this is just a hook knife. I wrap it in this large possum because one, I have this large possum and two this just properly uh, properly sheaths this knife very well now on to the next part so there's really no order in here but the next part is just a solid belt knife or just solid pack knife and this one is the allegheny knives m38 as you guys can see here getting it has quite a bit of use hopefully you can see all the use on this thing but a really great knife for this very great general purpose uh, bushcrafting knife i really enjoy this knife especially for its size being considered it's really capable and so for its size and its capabilities, I decided to throw it in this pack because I think it is quite capable, uh, especially having a nice knife in the pack, just in case I need this for batoning or crafting anything further. So aside from that, the next thing is a firebox, and of course the Bushcraft LF, uh, or Bushcraft Essentials LF, uh, firebox in here because it's really great and goes hand in hand with cooking and allows me to start small concentrated fires pretty much wherever I go or wherever conditions and once again that's another really important thing because in this kind of get up and go kind of day bag I'm not always going to be guaranteed to go to the best and most nice place to go bushcrafting so sometimes I might have to start a fire in the bush box just because that's the most responsible way to start a fire in my particular particular given area or climate. So that is the primary reason I carry the bush box. So next to that, or in the main compartment, hope you guys can kind of see here, it's a little dark, but you can see that everything that I was referencing was pulled out of here. And so now I'm pulling stuff out of the center container. So next is my fire kit, very basic. I've been over this before, but it just carries a fire piston, flint and steel, and some tinder, char cloth. And you guys can see some tinder here for starting fires. Once again, important to practice and keep these types of skills honed. So that's the primary reason I carry a smaller, more abbreviated fire kit. So next to that is my small MSR Siegel uh, pot and this inside of it, and this is a steel steel pot and inside of it is I'm carrying a Bannock mix with some coffee so you guys can see I can do some cooking if I want to or if that's what my goal for the day to accomplish is, is I have Bannock for making that 
inside this pot and then several different coffees in case I want to or have to make coffee while out in the field. So that's the basics to what this pot looks like on the inside and why I carry that. So that's all that's in the main compartment. Now there's a side compartment. <laughs> Hope you guys can see where I'm reaching. So the next thing is paracord. I'm carrying around 30 feet of paracord here and I just carry it in varying different colors. Whatever color is applicable, just grab it and go. But carrying on a spool, this one just happens to be desert camo. So that's that. And then lastly, but certainly not least for this kit is the Bible. Just a complete military Bible. So. That is all for the entire kit. And so I'm gonna roll back and... So guys, hopefully you enjoyed taking that nice quick look at my day pack. And once again, it's not a super comprehensive pack unlike packs in later or earlier years. But what I wanted to accomplish with this pack overall was having the basics to firecraft, cooking, carving, just doing really basic but very important bushcrafting and survival skills 